Namaste yogis. Welcome to your practice. This is Steven from Yoga Works. This class is called very first time on your mat. So I would say welcome. This is exciting. Maybe it really is your first time on a mat. Maybe you don't even have a mat and you're in some carpet or a patch of grass. So it's all good. Maybe you've taken a break from yoga and you're back after a little while. Maybe you just felt like a less intensive practice. Uh, it's all good. Whichever reason you're here for, um, be welcome. And I would like to say, if you're really new to yoga, then um, this is exciting. Um, let this be an opportunity to experiment, to get to know your body, your mind, your breath in a little bit more detail, and to be curious about what it is that you're capable of, and sometimes what you're not yet capable of. So some poses might feel a little bit um, easy and natural for you to do, and some other ones will feel like uh, quite a stretch, may even be out of your reach for now or even forever. And all of this is fine, so feel free to skip something, rest in between, modify if you need to, and just um, make sure you feel better than when you started your yoga practice in the beginning. We're going to use a strap here. Uh, I've got this sort of yoga strap, but um, if you don't have one of these, it's okay. You just grab a belt or even a long towel, which you can just loop around your foot. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. This is pretty much the only prop we're going to need. And uh, let's get started. First time on your mat. So lie down on your back. For now, keep the knees bent. We can straighten the legs uh, later on. I'll, um, I'll talk to you about that in a bit. And then loop the strap around the ball of your right foot. I like to leave a little bit of space for the hands to grab each side of the strap, if I can get this to work. So I'm holding one end of the strap in each hand, so that my arms are straight and my shoulders are down. And for you, it might be that your leg is a little bit closer to the ground or a bit closer to your face than my leg is. That's fine, just find a, a reasonable angle to work with there. And as your hands are gently pulling down on that strap, your foot is pushing up into the strap. Nice. And then just flatten your back onto the mat, but keep a little bit of space under the lower back. When I say flatten, uh, I meant keep a little bit of space under your back. That was a bit of a poor choice of words. And then if this feels okay, you can try to lengthen the left leg away from you on your mat. But if this starts to pull on stuff too much, it's, uh, it's a bigger stretch than you're ready for at the moment, then you can also keep that left foot on the mat instead. And then take another breath or so, just feel the tissues lengthen in the back of this right leg. And I'm going to hold both ends of the strap in my right hand and start to open the right leg to the right. And I'm opening just till I start to feel the left hip is becoming lighter and wants to start lifting off the mat, but I stop before that happens. So ideally we keep both hips grounded to the best of our ability. And again, I'm pulling the strap at the right hand and I'm pushing the foot into the strap at the same time. Another breath or so here. So now we're biasing that stretch a bit more to the inner side of the leg and then lift the strap up or the foot actually with the strap and then start to lean the foot a little bit over to the left, but not much at all. It might be above that left hip, for example. And then with the right hip, I'm just lengthening forward towards that straightened leg. I'm getting a nice stretch in the outer hip here. Nice, another moment or so. You can also swap hands if that uh, feels a little bit better. And now, with the strap in your left hand, allow the left leg to go over to the left. Uh, the right leg goes over to the left a little bit more. And maybe you're going all the way over. Still, the right leg, it might be parallel to the mat, or it might be touching down. All these options are okay. But don't feel like there's any certain um, version of the pose that's better than another. There's only what works better for your body, really not the one correct one in all the yoga practices there's nothing like that good another breath here and then lift the strap 
back up and let's swap legs if you want to keep the bottom foot on the mat to start with and then loop the strap around the ball of the left foot lift the foot up into the strap and hold one end of the strap in each hand relax the shoulders down i find it nice if the arms are straight ish it sort of requires minimal effort you can just sort of hang from the strap on both ends and then i'm lightly pushing the left foot up into the strap as i'm pulling down a bit with the hands right. this is good or if you want to add that right leg straighter away from you it's going to add a bit more intensity to the pose if it's too much you know what to do just uh, go back to another option or even bend that top knee a bit or reduce the angle all these are great options to explore and then hold both ends of the strap in your left hand start to open the leg sideways so out to the left go slowly so you start to feel oh if i go any further that whole right hip and leg are gonna lift off a bit so stop before that happens sometimes i like the right hand on the right hip to ground that leg down a bit take another breath or so feel the inner tissues the inner groin of that left leg lengthen and then lift the leg up now we're going a little bit over to the right but not much at all so the foot is maybe at a 15 degree angle or so and once you're here do your best to lengthen the left hip forward sometimes i like to give a little push with that free hand into the hip crease and then let's go all the way over to the side you can stop wherever you want and it might be nice to post that right elbow down so you've got something to hang the leg up into this is a nice a twist for the spine as we're still lengthening those hamstrings it doesn't matter how many years i've done yoga this still feels good to start my practice in this way simple warm-up and then lift the leg back up remove the strap to the side we won't be using it for uh, the rest of the class and then bring both knees into the chest and open the arms wide nice. and then shift your hips a little bit to the right drop both knees to the left side and I reach away to that right arm sometimes I like to rest the left hand on the top leg and this is a simple spinal twist so the shoulders are staying grounded on the mat as the hips are turning to the left so creating a nice rotation around the spine and then keep the breath as soft as you can during this whole practice as much as you can when the breath is relaxed the body and the brain they get a signal that everything is safe you can uh, let go and allow yourself to access the poses a little bit better good and then look back to center shift the hips a little bit left knees to chest and then draw the knees down to the right side open the arms or maybe rest the right hand on the top leg and then this is it sometimes you get into the pose and your only job is just to stay a little bit to breathe to watch what happens let the mind not drift off too much see if you can focus on what is available right here nice and then slowly come back up nice come on to hands and knees stack your shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees and try to have as neutral a spine as possible nice and then lightly squeeze around your center so we're engaging the abdominals maybe even the muscles in the side of the torso your obliques and then reach your left leg back and post the left toes down on the mat so you could say this is a half plank one knee is still down but that left leg is in a plank and lengthen the chest a little bit forward including the crown of the head reaching forward nice either stay here or 
you can lift that left foot a bit off the mat watch that the belly doesn't drop too much you don't lose your core awareness and then if you feel quite stable you can reach right arm forward over the head nice couple of breaths here just feel the body is working to stabilize down the middle and add a little reach through the right arm and the left leg good and place everything down again let's swap sides so the right leg reach it back tuck the toes under straighten that whole right leg as you press the heel a bit back and then lengthen your spine forward crown of the head forward nice this is a uh, the beginning of plank, plank on the one side with that leg. And then keep the spine in a, as neutral as possible position as you can. Lift the right leg a little bit. I would recommend not to go too high and then reach the left arm over the head. Breathe a couple of times here through the abdominals, into your back, into your whole rib cage. Feel those little movements forward and back side to side to stay balanced one more breath and then release the hands down nice. let's do downward facing dog so spread your fingers wide press all parts of the hands down at the front of the mat and press the hips up and back so on the feet and the hands for this pose and then for this first down dog just bend your knees a good amount make sure you're get the distance right sometimes if you're too far or too close to the hands it uh, doesn't feel so good so just try to align it right in the middle it takes a bit of time a bit of practice to find the right distance for your body and then press the hands down lengthen the hips up and back keep the knees bent so that your spine can be free and you're not restricted by some tension in the hamstrings Good, and then back down, lower the knees. We're gonna do one more of those uh, bird dogs, a little bit of core work we did in the beginning. So left leg back, you can go straight back this time, right arm forward and balance. Take another breath, reach through the arm and the leg, and then place the hand down, swap sides, right leg, left arm, breathe. Add a little reach through the arm to the leg. One more breath. And then exhale, place it down. Nice. Downward facing dog again. Spread the fingers wide. Push down onto the mat. Lift the hips up and back. And this time we'll try something else. Lift the heels as high as you can. Straighten the legs. And then push away through the hands. Lift the hips up and back. So you get a super high triangle, you could say. With the apex being your the base of the spine and the tailbone now let's lift up 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 through the sit bones through the spine to the tops of the legs press the hands down and then slowly lower down but anytime your wrists get a little bit sore that's quite common in yoga you can always do a few circles or get off the hands um, whenever you need to nice and then let's come down onto the belly into sphinx pose. Sphinx is where we stack the shoulders over the elbows and with the hands I quite like to clasp them together but there's other options you can do prayer hands or palms down on the mat if that feels better and I just press the elbows down and ever so slightly pull the hands towards you broaden the chest that's a nice Mild back bend is great if you've been sitting for a long time. You just want to um, move the spine in different directions. Open the chest and the front of the shoulders. Another breath or so, feel the little stretch in the belly. And then slowly release. Nice. You can press back to child's pose just for a little brief moment. This is a good resting pose in case any of the poses that your yoga instructor uh, proposes is not working for you you can always relax for a moment here to catch your breath to rest and then to join in again when you're ready 
Good, let's come up to standing. We're gonna do standing forward fold. We've chosen some really accessible staple poses that you'll find in most yoga classes. So for me, I like the feet hip distance apart. Some people like closer together or even wider. Try out different options and see what works. But the hip distance feels uh, nice and stable. Good. And then bend the knees quite a good amount and let the spine relax forward and down over the legs. Let your head just hang, release all the tension from your neck. Here you can always hold opposite elbows. Or you can dangle the arms down, whatever is the case. Let's notice we're not trying to touch the ground, we're not trying to touch our toes. We're just lightly stretching the backs of the legs. And if you feel a nice uniform lengthening in the whole back body, then you're doing this pose really well. Even if you're much higher up or you feel a lot of tightness in the back body, just um, do the pose to your ability. It would be hard to do it to somebody else's ability, isn't it? Nice, and then transition to flat back. This is, um, I like it most with the hands on the shins. So push the hands to the shins. You can straighten the legs if that feels doable. And then lengthen your chest forward. Lean a little bit more weight into the front of the feet without lifting the heels off the mat. And then try to no longer round your back in any way. So we're lengthening forward. Now here, lift the belly a little bit up to the spine, just to keep a bit of core awareness. Keep the breath flowing. We, call, we often call this half lift or half forward fold or flat back in some yoga classes. Good. And then release the arms down, bend the knees. With the knees bent, slowly roll up to standing. That's going to do another uh, staple yoga pose called the chair. For this, keep the feet hip distance. Bend the knees quite a good amount. So you're sitting nice and low in an imaginary chair. And then reach the arms up. Press the thumbs a little bit behind you. And then look forward with your ears somewhere between the biceps. Nice. Try not to go into a big back bend, keep the spine a little bit stable, keep the abdominals on, and then slowly come up. This one definitely works. The legs, nicey. Nice, plant the left foot down, and then hold your right ankle in your right hand. Now see if you can bring the right foot into the left inner thigh. Squeeze the two together and then bring the hands to the heart. This is tree pose or the first variation of tree pose. If it's really hard for you to balance today, just hold on to a wall or a piece of furniture or something nearby. Uh, your husband, your partner, your children, whatever is required to balance or Actually, what most often happens, we all fall out sometimes, and then you just come back. This is fine. Just make peace with uh, that this is going to happen at some point. You're going to lose your balance, because we all do. Good, and if you want, you can reach the arms up into the sky for a different expression of the same pose. If it feels worse, then you can always keep your hands down as well. Good, and then release the leg down. In between, you can shake the legs for a moment. And then keep the right foot down. Hold your left ankle and place the foot inside the thigh. Good, once you get there, press the two together. Bring the hands to the heart. Focus your gaze on something steady in front of you. And then also try to steady your breath. Either stay here or lift the arms. Reach up through the fingers and accept these little movements or sometimes big movements because there's no tree that's perfectly static and unmoving. That's just not how nature works. Good, one more breath and then slowly come out. You can shake the legs out. Now step the feet wide. You might have to turn to your left or to your right. That's fine. 
legs. So legs quite wide. If I were to stretch out my hands, then the ankles are more or less under the wrists, just to give you a bit of a reference. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then turn the right toes out. And I quite like the heels to be aligned here, but you can also explore other options. Good, and then bend that right knee until the right knee is above the right ankle. Nice. Don't go beyond the ankle. That probably means you need to lengthen the pose, make it a bit longer. And then engage the abdominal slightly. Reach the right hand forward and the left arm back. So now I'll try to get the same intensity into all parts of the body. For example, the left leg and the right. Can they work equally? They're doing different things. One is at the back, one is at the front, one is straight, one is bent. But can you get an, a sense that your weight is carried equally 50% by both feet? Good. And then from here, straighten the front leg. Have your hands to your hips. And then start to deepen the right hip crease. Start to lower the right shoulder down. So it's this kind of motion from the top. Deepen the right hip crease, the left is going to lift up and then lower your right hand to your right shin or wherever you end up there at the bottom, that's fine. When you're ready, you can lift the left arm up. It's fine to look down. You can look in the direction of the chest or you can also look up. I don't find that super relaxing for the neck, so I prefer to look down or sideways. So the legs are straight, I'm rooting the feet down, I'm even pulling them a little bit together underneath me. Good. And then re-bend the front knee, place your right elbow on your right thigh, and then with the left arm, reach forward and up. Stretch through the whole top side of the body, keep that back foot anchored down. Keep the front ribs a little bit in. And then find a nice diagonal line at the top. Good. Slowly lift back up. Now it's going to turn the right toes in. Bring the left toes out. Arrange the feet or place them in a good position if you need to. Bend the front knee. If you're too short, lengthen. If it's too intense, come a little bit closer. Uh, still the same pose and you'll be pulling a little bit less on uh, inner thigh muscles and other tissues. Good. Then here, once you're ready, reach through the arm. You can always look back at that back hand to make sure it's in line with the shoulder. And then look forward over the front fingertips, over the left hand. Nice. Couple of breaths here. Soften the shoulder so we don't want to scrunch the shoulders up towards the ears. There's already enough energy we need to expend in this pose without having to um, lose it in different tensions in the body. Keep a good bend in that front knee and underneath you pull the legs a little bit together like they're trying to meet in the middle. Good. And then release straight in the front leg. Hands to the hips. Remember, we're going sideways, left shoulder down, right shoulder up. If you want to practice one more time, is that sort of hinge where left shoulder goes down, right shoulder up. And then release the left hand. Reach the right arm up. So the arms are more or less in one straight line. Ground the feet down. Let the breath move freely through the pose. If you find in any pose the breath can't move, you're holding your breath, it's probably too intense. You might have to back off a little bit or even skip it all together. Nice. Rebend the front knee, left elbow to the left thigh, and then when you're ready, reach the right arm forward and up. So you get a nice long line on the top side of the body. Press the outer edge of the back foot down. You might need to lift the inner arch to do that. And then breathe some space into the right side of the rib cage and under that right arm. One more breath. Good. Slowly lift back up. 
Now we're going to parallel the feet again, just like how we started. We will build on this pose. Have, have your hands to your hips. Nice. Keep the legs grounded. Start to hinge forward from the hips. So it's like you're pulling yourself down with the front of the hips. Once you reach you know, that end point where you just naturally stop, release the hands down. You can flatten the palms if that's available. And if you want to, you can always walk the hands a bit further back in between the feet for Prasarita Padottanasana. This is what we call the wide-legged forward fold in Sanskrit. Ground down through the feet. Lift up through the kneecap so your quads are active. So that the more the quads activate, the more the hamstrings, the backs of the legs can release. If the head comes down, make sure it's light. There's not a lot of weight in the crown of the head. And then your arms are bent to about 90 degrees if you walk them further back. You might not be able to see that. Good, and then come back up onto the fingertips. And then just make your way down to a seat. Nice. Hold the backs of your legs. Hold the backs of the thighs. Come up onto the tippy toes, so lift the heels, and then lengthen the spine. Keep the shoulders onto your back. Nice. Keep a nice lift on the chest as you start to lift the feet until your lower legs are parallel to the mat. This is what we call boat pose, Navasana. You can either stay here with the hands at the backs of the thighs, or you can reach the hands forward and see if you can balance on the hips. Try not to collapse and round too much. So it's chest up, shoulders back, legs active, even the fingertips active. Three, two, one, and lower the legs down. Nice. Bend the right knee. Let's place the right foot over the left knee, so to the outside. Do something active with this bottom leg, so activate your foot. And then wrap the elbow of your left arm around the outside of the right knee. Place the right hand behind you, and then lift the chest up. We're trying to lengthen the spine. After you lift as much as possible, start to turn to the right for our seated twist couple of breaths here. You can turn the neck further, you can even look over that right shoulder, but sometimes your neck is not going to be very happy with that, so if that's the case, rather just keep the head a little bit more neutral. You can see you've got lots of options in these yoga classes, so you can always choose to push a little bit harder or back off a little bit and choose a bit of a easier option. Good, straighten the right leg. Bend the left knee and place your left foot over the right knee. Activate the bottom leg, the bottom foot, and then right elbow wraps. Left hand goes behind you. First lift the chest, get some height as you ground the sit bones down. And then turn to the left. Keep it simple. Nice grounding through the leg and through the hips. Nice lift through the spine without getting very tense, so your breath can still move easily. Good. When you're done, slowly release, and then bend your knees, reach your hands forward round your back, and then see how slowly you can lower yourself all the way down, so you're doing this with as much control as you can and then rest the head down at the end place your feet parallel and about hip distance apart quite close to the hips you can check with your fingers how far the heels are from you and then press the feet down to bridge the hips up the main muscle is going to do this your glutes so squeeze the glutes so the to let the hips lift up Feel grounding through the feet and also through the top of the shoulders. You can stay here or you can also clasp your hands together behind your lower back. This might help you to wiggle the shoulders a little bit more underneath you 
and perhaps lift the chest and the belly slightly higher. Whatever you do, keep the glutes on and just make sure that your knees don't go too wide. Imagine the legs kind of going parallel out from the hips. One more inhale and then exhale slowly lower down. Nice. Then straighten the legs out. Let the legs go towards the corners of your mat and let the legs, the feet just flop out to the side. Move your arms slightly away from the body with the palms up and then roll your head a couple of times left, right, left, right and then let it settle in the middle where it's just right. Deep breath in. Exhale, side breath out. Two more like this, inhale. Exhale, sigh, let it go. One more like this, inhale. Exhale, relax completely. This is our final resting pose. Always good to spend a few moments here after your practice. A few minutes can already work wonders, but if you really want to make a big difference, then maybe five to ten minutes would be a great luxury. So if you can, feel free to stay here as long as you like, really. Or if it's time to go, you have just allocated half an hour to your practice, then start to move your hands, move your feet, bend your knees, roll over to your side, and then slowly come up to sitting. Fold your palms together in front of the chest. Touch your hands to your forehead, to your heart center and bow to yourself on the mat. Yogis, thank you so much for practicing. Namaste, everybody. It was a pleasure to guide you perhaps through your first yoga class or at least um, a nice uh, relaxing practice, good old basics, uh, good old hatha practice. And I hope you feel amazing and that you come back for many, many more yoga classes in your life. Good. All the best, stay well, and see you here soon.